Hi, this is Sonia Doucette. For this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate QC, which is known as the reaction quotient, and then compare that to KC to predict the net reaction direction. So QC is just like KC, equal to the products over the reactants. So for this problem, where we're given the concentrations of reactants and products, for the reaction where carbon monoxide is reacting with hydrogen gas to give us methane gas and water as a gas, and the concentrations that were given are shown here, we want to know what QC is. So like I said, QC is products over reactants. So it's going to be methane gas concentration multiplied by the concentration of water as a gas divided by the concentration of carbon monoxide gas multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen gas raised to the third power. So again, QC is just like KC except one very important difference, that those concentrations that you see are usually non-equilibrium concentrations for QC. Whereas when we're calculating KC, those concentrations are equilibrium concentrations. By definition, Kc is the concentration of products over reactants at equilibrium. Qc is some other condition that is usually not equilibrium, and what you do is you calculate Qc, you compare it to Kc, which is equilibrium, to determine what is happening with the reaction. Is Are more reaction, reactants being formed than products in order to reach equilibrium? Are more products being formed than reactants to reach equilibrium? Or are you at equilibrium? You can also have a situation where you know Kc, you've measured some concentrations of reactants and products, and you want to know, am I at equilibrium? So if, if you are at equilibrium, comparing Qc to Kc can also tell you that. So let's go through this problem. So we're given these concentrations, and I'm going to substitute them into the Qc equation here. So the concentration of methane is 0.1423 molar. You're going to multiply that by the concentration of water, which is 0 0.0842 molar, and then divide that by the concentration of carbon monoxide gas, which is 0.1365 molar, multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen gas, which is 0.0842. 0.0882 molar, and that's raised to the third power. So if you do the math here, you get a result of QC being equal to 128, and that's to three significant figures. So what you can do now is compare QC to KC, and you know that KC is 3.93, that QC is 128. So obviously, QC is greater than KC. So what can this tell you? Well, there are a couple of criteria you can use to figure out what's going on. So one is that if QC is less than KC, the net reaction direction goes from left to right. So it's going from reactants to products. Another criteria is that if QC is greater than KC, which is the case that we have for this specific problem, then you know that the net reaction direction is going from right to left, and that means you're going from products to reactants. And then the final condition is that if QC is equal to KC, then there is no net reaction direction because you are in equilibrium. So your reaction is in equilibrium if QC is equal to KC. So 
to explain this a little bit more, let's look at our specific case. So I'm going to write this reaction again, but I'm going to, instead of writing that double-headed arrow, I'm going to write the forward reaction arrow and the reverse reaction arrow. So carbon monoxide gas plus hydrogen gas is giving us methane gas plus water as a gas. So the criteria that our situation meets is that QC is greater than KC. And when that's the case, the net reaction direction is going from right to left, from product to reactant. So what that really means, if you're thinking about the forward reaction rate and the reverse reaction rate, is that the forward I'm sorry, the reverse reaction rate, so this reaction rate, is greater than the forward reaction rate, which is this one. So what that's telling you is that there are an excess of products in terms of this reaction reaching equilibrium. So more products need to be converted to reactants than reactants need to be converted to products in order to reach equilibrium. So in this case, again, to sum up, by calculating QC, comparing QC to KC, we know that the net reaction direction for our case is going from products to reactants. So the reverse reaction rate is faster than the forward reaction rate. And as you know by now, when our reaction finally does reach equilibrium, the forward reaction rate will be equal to the reverse reaction rate. So that's it. That's how you can use um, QC and KC to predict net reaction direction.